Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Philadelphia Presbyterian Church. Welcome to God's house. We are so glad that you are here and worshiping with us this morning. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord as we celebrate the Lord's Supper together today. First, I'd like to draw your attention to the center aisle. You'll find a black pew pad. If you could sign that and pass it down to the person next to you so that we know you've been worshiping with us this morning. And also, I'd like to draw your attention to our order of service. In it, you can follow along with our order of service this morning or also on the screens to the left and the right. In our order of service, you'll find lots of great announcements. I want to draw your attention to just a couple today. In here is a reminder that next month is our Claire's Army fundraiser that we have. Claire's Army fundraiser, we have themed tables um, during the Claire's Army fundraiser. And if you would like to sponsor a table, you can contact Millie Mullis or you can contact the church office for more information about that. And also, the backpacks of love, um, the, our backpacks of love, uh, now see, I'm losing my, my train of thought. Backpacks of love that we gather um, food for that goes to Clear, Clear Creek Elementary School is in need of some special items today. They are in need of large meat such as beef stew, chicken and dumplings, white meat chicken, hearty soups, oatmeal and grits and lance crackers and pudding cups. Those meals go in backpacks to students at Clear Creek Elementary who otherwise wouldn't have food during the weekend. And so we ask if you could, if you could make a donation to that cause. There are shelves in the hallway over here and I can tell you that I have seen some students that get those backpacks and the smiles on their faces when they receive them is amazing. It is a wonderful cause for us to be able to help. And so for those of you who have given donations, I say thank you very much on behalf of those students. And also, I wanted to again let you know, if you weren't here last week, we had a blood drive here at the church. We collected 36 units of blood, and that is an amazing thing. And I had an opportunity to see Tina Duke Ross on Friday, and I know we've heard a lot of things about what's happening with Tina, but Tina looked amazingly well for all the things that I have heard. And Tina is a recipient of blood donations right now, so blood saves lives. So if you have the opportunity to donate blood, I encourage you to do so. And my friends, now is the time for us to pass the peace and love of Jesus Christ to our friends and neighbors. Friends, let us continue to worship the Lord.
Please be seated. Friends, we gather together this day to worship together, to praise together, to hear a word from the Lord together, and to pray together. It is an honor to be a child of God and to have the opportunity to pray to God in good times and in need. And so we come together to join of one heart and one mind and to pray. First, I will start and give us a moment of silence so that we can meditate, we can confess those things that are burdening our heart. Then I will pray, and then we'll join together in one voice saying the Lord's Prayer together. Friends, would you pray with me? Creator God, the one who made heaven and earth and all things in it and of it, we come to you in this moment, leaning on you in times of trouble, celebrating with you in times of joy, releasing to you all those things that have us heavy burdens and feeling overwhelmed. God, some of us come this morning because it is Sunday, and others come seeking something new, hungry and in need. But we come standing in the need of prayer. Some of us come, Lord, because we're struggling with things that are happening in this world. We do not understands we stand on one side or the other of what's happening in the world or in our families or in schools even in the church God and we forget who you are and if we would just listen for that still small voice we would hear you say I and I alone am God. I am the great I am. And we need to be guided by you and you alone. When children are dying and guns are firing and chaos is raging, remind us that you are not the author of chaos. Remind us that When families are fighting and hurt is what we feel in our heart, you are the healer. Remind us when we are high school students searching for colleges and parents going on college tours that when we leave everything in your hands, Your master plan has been set out in advance. For teachers, fill teachers with patience and understanding and parents with peace of mind that this is your world. God, for caregivers, fill them with a new sense of hope, patience and peace. Being a caregiver is stressful and hard and overwhelming. For those who have been told that they are sick in their body beyond anything that a doctor's hands can fix or mind can comprehend, remind them that you are God, the true doctor, the true healer. God, we thank you for things like blood donations and wheelchairs that can provide transportation where legs can no longer do. Lord, we thank you for choirs that sing your praises and preachers that bring your word and churches that have their doors open to be able to come together. But most of all, Lord, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who set an example, sacrificed his life, 
and did it all for us. He was the one who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, no matter what you are going through, no matter what kind of hole you might be in, mm -hmm. keep in mind that it is because of Jesus Christ that you have been forgiven. morning. What's happening? Church! Yes! You're so awesome. Hey, I want to know if you'll hang out with me for a minute. I need a little something though, and maybe you'll answer some questions for me. Will you do that? Man, I'm hungry. Are you hungry? Anybody else hungry? I'm hungry. I wish I had something that would help me with my hunger. What have I got? Somebody help me. What do I do? How? <laughs> like this? Ah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> like that, would that be good? You know what else? I'm cold. Man, I'm freezing. Are y'all cold? I'm freezing. What can I do? What, use a blanket? <laughs> like this? Oh, that's so much better. You help me. Oh, man, that's so good. And now, if I could just see. I have some food. I'm warmer. But I can't see anything. What glasses? Wear on my head. Right where? Here? It should be easy to find. It doesn't get lost in the hair. Where is it? Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Oh, you touched it. Can you help me put it on my eyes? I can't see to do it. Oh, there you all are. And you're so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. What did you do? You helped me. You were right there when I needed you. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I needed to be clothed, you clothed me. When I couldn't see, you helped me to see. You know who else does that? Jesus. Jesus does that. Do you know what he tells us in the Bible? When you need something, and we always need something, Jesus is right there with us to help us. That's what Easter is about. Do you remember we talked about Easter and he was in the tomb? And then he wasn't. He rose from the dead. And now he is everywhere. So when you go to sleep at night, you know who's there with you? To help you. Do you know what? When you're scared, do you know who's there with you to help you? Jesus. Do you know when you're trying to do your math homework 
who was there to help you? Because <laughs> he gave you a brain in your head and parents to help you. In all that we do, wherever we go, whatever happens, just like you help me, God is there. And I want you to always remember God will help you. Now, I need help with something, too. One more thing, but let's pray first. And you put your hands together and close your eyes and say, Dear God, thank you for helping us in everything and being with us, showing us the good way to go. In Jesus' name, amen. I have one more problem. I have all these Hershey kisses, and I can't eat them. Can somebody help me with this? Oh, you can take them. Could you help me with this? Awesome. They need to get eaten, and, you know, I just can't eat them all. So I thought maybe that you could help me with that. Could you help me with that? Oh, give them all to you? That would be super helpful, wouldn't it? Awesome. Awesome. Y'all have an awesome day. Thank you. That was angelic, absolutely angelic. Thank you so much, beautiful. God's word comes to us this day from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 24. 
As we turn to God's word, let us turn to our Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, they are words and they are life. They come from your book of life given to us so that we may have life and know it fully. And we thank you so much. We pray that as we hear them today, dear Lord, that we would not just hear them, but we would feel them. That we would feel your spirit in them. That your presence in our life would be life itself. And so we would be filled with the elements on this table, but also the element of your word that comes to us in scripture so that we may live in that life, in this place and beyond. We ask and pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Our gospel reading today is our scripture is from Luke 24. It is the story that we often hear called the walk to Emmaus. Um, and it is the end of the story. We're going to go back and, and look at the beginning in a minute. But this is the end of the story and what happened. So I invite you to hear the word of God. When he was at the table with them, he took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it and began to give it to them. Their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight and they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, it is true, the Lord has risen. And has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our yard, we have this mud hole. Oh, yeah. It's a place where several neighbors' water drains into our yard. And it's not a, a big mud hole because it runs off, but it's, it is definitely a mud hole. And we have a dog the size of a horse, <laughs> whose feet are the size of coffee cup saucers. And you know what she likes to do? Go right to that mud hole. Every single time. And then she goes out there, and the mud hole is not big enough for her to wallow in, so she goes out there and walks in it. She's got long fur and big feet. And you know what those feet do when they come back in the house? <laughs> it looks like Bigfoot lives in our house. <laughs> and that water sits there stagnant. And she walks in that water and it gets on her belly and it gets on her feet. And it smells like Bigfoot lives in our house. <laughs> and what do we do? What would you do? We fuss. Dog, do you not understand? Don't go in the mud hole. I won't <laughs> open the door straight for the mud hole. Every single dog, don't go in the mud hole. And then we get all upset, and we get upset at the dog, and the dog's like, oh, I'm sorry, can I go back in the mud hole? <laughs> over and over and over. This is how it works. And we look at each other, and we get upset, and the house smells, and it's muddy, and the dog is muddy, and we just get at odds. And one day, we looked at each other and said, this is not going anywhere good. This mud hole is ruining our life. We have got to get in here and make some changes. Maybe we fix the mud hole. Maybe we train the dog. But we have to get in here one way or another and do something to help. Because this situation is tough. God knows that this happens with us. Anybody here ever get in a mud hole? Got any mud holes in your life? Places where you go out there and you get, and you know that mud hole's there. You know it's there. And you know it's trouble. It's smelly and it's nasty and it's muddy and it might get your hands all nasty or muddy might get your soul dirty. And if you go in that mud hole, it's going to hurt you or it's going to hurt somebody else. It's going to cause trouble. There's no good end 
if you go in that mud hole. And what do we do? Just like that dog, we will sometimes, knowing it is not good for us, run straight for that mud hole. So what happens? We back up in the story. There are these couple of folks who are walking on this road to Emmaus. And what are they doing? You read the scripture, what are they doing? They're walking down the way, and they're talking about all the hoopla about Jesus. <clears throat> ah, they were disciples, so they were followers of Jesus. They're like, hey, let's talk about Jesus. All this headlines, you know, the, the, the Yahoo ticker, the Google ticker, uh, CNN, Fox, whatever it is. They are caught up in it, buddy. What is going on? Hey, there was this guy, Jesus. We saw him. He was cool. He was the rock star. He was the hottest dude in the house. What did he do? Why? Because he was, he was doing things for people. He was helping the blind to see. He was clothing the naked. He, he was feeding people. He was doing all these great miracles. He was the man. And then he got crucified. And we liked him, and we followed him, and it was all great. And he was a hope for the future for us. And now he's gone, and now it's tough, and it's awful. And they're just rolling round and round and round with all this stuff. You can almost see them wringing their hands and worried about it. And headlines of the day. And all of a sudden, Jesus pops up, just strolling along. They're walking along. He pops up. He goes, hey, fellas, what's going on? I'm like, what do you mean, what's going on? You don't know the news? He goes, what news? I'm going to try it again, Katie. <laughs> and they said, you imagine him saying, where you been? Under a rock? <laughs> Think about it, Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't know if that was appropriate, but we tried anyway. <laughs> And he goes, what are you talking about? And they start telling him all the stuff, right? All the stuff's going, all the stuff's going, all the stuff. And they're so caught up, so caught up in the human stuff that they miss the fact that it's Jesus walking with them. Y'all, they were in a mud hole. They were caught up in the mud hole. And it probably felt or looked a whole lot like this. <laughs> We're on that road. Here we go. We can do it. <laughs> oh! No. <laughs> And walking right along with, come, you know we had to have a mud hole picture. I mean, come on. What does Jesus do? Jesus does what he came from heaven to do. He's walking along with him, and he says, oh, y'all got all this stuff going on? Get out of the mud hole. He says, you know what I came here to do? I came here to get you all out of this mud hole because that is not where God wants you to be. It is not going anywhere good. The path you are walking down, you are missing the whole point. I am here to help. When he was at the table with them, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he began to give it to them and their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight and they asked each other, were our hearts not burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? What does Jesus do with these guys who, with Jesus right in front of them, can't even see him because they're so deep in the mud of their own humanity? What does he do? He washes off the mud. And he says to them, what's it going to take? God is not going to let you stay in the mud holes that you're stuck in and take your pick. Relationship, money, job, the news, pride, greed, anger, frustration, brokenness. What is it? Jesus said, I am here to do everything it takes. to get you out of that mud hole. And as soon as he is in their presence and he breaks the bread and says, here I am, what happens? Everything changes. Did our 
hearts not burn within us. They're not in the mud hole anymore. They're out. They're clean. And they're completely free from what they were stuck in. And they now see God. And it changes their world. They're like, yes, love is true. Yes, hope is true. New life, us being together with God. It's amazing. How has that got to feel? Maybe it feels something like this. Okay, so the turnies got stuck in a lake. This is the guy well, stuck in the mud. So now dad this is, is Jesus. going to pull them out. Wait, it looks like it's on mute. You think it's on? He's pulling you. You guys are making your way to safety. Okay. Ah! I think there's one in the camera. What if they're floating? They might be. I can see your tires! Oh my! That is gross! Yeah, I'm not doing that. Uh -uh. No. No one should ever have to do that. That's gross. It's like a waterfall coming out of it. Don't you love that little girl? That is gross. <laughs> isn't, but isn't that how it feels? When you go to those places that take us away from God, when we miss God right in front of us who is always right there, we just get gross and nasty and we hurt people and we hurt ourselves, And we get in that nasty, smelly, track mud all through everything mud hole. And Jesus comes along and says, you know what? To get you out of it, I'm willing to get in it with you. And that little girl goes, I can see their tires. Can you see how excited she starts getting? They're going to get free. They're going to get free. And they got up and they returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found the 11 and those with them. And they assembled together and they said, it is true. The Lord has risen. I can see your tires again. There's hope. You're going to get pulled out of the mud hole. And life can be full and whole just like God wants it to be because he is risen. And even though we know that sometimes, brothers and sisters, what happens? Do we always now say, we're clean. We're on the good path. No more mud hole. Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? Do you? But sometimes we think, hey, it's all cool. We've got going on. But here's the problem. See, we're still flawed human beings. We still get on that road to Emmaus with those disciples and think we got it going on, and we don't. And maybe that looks like this. Oh. <laughs> we ain't got it going on. We might think it's perfect and it's beautiful and it's perfect to see. And we're still flawed human beings. But God has come to help us. Amen? Amen. Oh, come on. Amen? Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, or things to come can ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. In other words, Jesus has said, you ain't got it going on, but I do. No matter what mud hole it is that you get stuck in, I will do whatever I have to do to come and get you. Is our life filled with mud holes? Yes. Yeah. Do we make them? Yes. Do we go out into a beautifully green yard and kick up the grass and throw water and go, ha ha, mud hole? <laughs> Is it our relationship with our spouse, with our friends, with ourselves? Does money tie you up in such a knot that you can't see God anymore? If you're a Fox News watcher and you see a CNN News watcher, does it just ruin your day? <laughs> if you're a CNN News watcher and you see a Fox News watcher, are you like, well, the world's going to...
Is it pride? Is it lust? Where's your mud hole? I promise you this. It's not deep enough. It's not wet enough. It's not big enough that God can't overcome it. Every single time. This is my body, he said, broken for you. Yep, Jesus said, I was under a rock. Not anymore, because there ain't no rock that can hold me. And there ain't no sin in me that can hold you. Jesus came, brothers and sisters. To be our help. Call on him. Hear the word of God and let it burn within us. So that we may again come out of that mud hole. Know that abundant life. And say, I don't care what happens. There is no mud hole bigger than my God. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son. In the Holy Spirit, amen. We come to a time in the service where we receive an offering. And I want you, if you will, as we do that today, to look and see that this table is the prime example of what offering means. In the Christian faith, Jesus said, I'm not going to give you some, I'm going to give you all. In this time of offering, you will see the plate come by, you will put money in it or a check in it or or, or whatever. Great, that's awesome, we need it, wonderful. But what I'm saying is this, it's Easter. What God has given to us is everything, so that we can give everything in his name. Money, great, but yourself. The burning of the scriptures within you to share with the world and the Spirit of God is what we are called to be because it is what Christ is before us. Consider in this time how God wants to use you to be the light and life to someone else. Let us receive our morning offering.
be seated. Friends, this is the table of the Lord. At this table, we find healing. At this table, we find hope. We can come to this table this morning if we are struggling and feeling like we are in that mud hole of life, trusting that the Lord is going to reach his hand down and pull us out when we feel like we are broken. This is the table that represents the blood and sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. When the Lord sat at the table with the disciples, he sat with Judas and Peter and Thomas and John, a bunch of what we might call misfits from all different places who would do and did all different things to him in all different places in their lives. So much like all of us gathered here today in all different places in our lives who do all different things. And yet Jesus says, come and take your seat at this table. You are all welcome here. You are all welcome, so take and eat and take and drink because I love you just the way you are in the midst of your mud hole, in the midst of your brokenness. I love you just the way you are. So come and take your seat at this table next to your Savior. Friends, you from the east and the west, come. You from the north and the south, come. Come take your seat at the table. Friends, would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are so incredibly grateful for the opportunity to be at this table, for the opportunity to dine at your table. Lord, we ask that you be present in this bread, to be present in this cup, for it to make a difference in our lives, not just for it to be food, but for it to be spiritual food for us. We come, Lord, from different places and different stages in our lives, and some of us are struggling with each other and with our families, and so we just bring everything that we have and everything that we are to this table, Lord, and ask you to fill in the broken places to clean us up and wash us clean. God, we come just as we are with all that we have. In your son's name, amen. Amen. And so it was on the night when he was with those disciples, the night when he was to be betrayed and arrested, that he took bread, and having given thanks to his Father in heaven, he broke it. And he gave it to each of them and he said, here is your help, here is love, here is grace, here is forgiveness, here is mercy, here is new life. This is my body, broken for you. In the same way he took a cup and he said, with my body so also, my life in my blood and for the purpose of forgiveness for the purpose of love for the purpose of you to live with God and each other I am broken and I give myself my life for yours every time brothers and sisters that we eat of this bread and drink of this cup we proclaim the good news that we have a new covenant, a covenant of life 
with God and each other. Because Christ was born to us, lived with us, taught us, and died for us. He was raised and will, by the power of God, come again to receive us into his kingdom for all time. This is the celebration of the meal of the greatest gift of all gifts given by God. And it is given to you. And it is given to me. And it is given for all time. By his love and by his grace, we are invited to celebrate this table with him at the foot of his throne. Hand in hand and heart in heart with our Lord. God calls us to this place. Let us now commune together. body of Christ.
Brothers and sisters, this is the blood of Christ. I've all been fed. Let us pray. You are our help that comes to us freely and lovingly with all power and might. You are our forgiveness and our grace. You are our new life, dear Lord. And now you have filled us, send us out into the world in that life that we may for others in you share that life. In Christ's name, amen. hymns are awesome. Um, exactly what it said. There you go. Christ is our shield. Christ is our help. Christ is our defender. Christ is our love. Christ is our life. The mud hole that you saw in the videos is at Uwari National Forest, an hour from here, in our own backyard. We're going on May the 11th. If you want to go with us, let me know. But we're not going to mud hole. <laughs> if you want to go jeeping, let me know. But here's the deal. The mud hole's always in our backyard, isn't it? Our backyard is going to be full of them. But there's no mud hole, no sin, no separation that can keep us from God. We have each other, brothers and sisters. We have God, and we are brought together by his life to be his people and live that life to the fullest unencumbered by sin or Satan or anything else that would stand in his way. Somebody give me an amen. 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 The Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and may in this Easter time you know the peace and life of our risen Lord. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.